This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Med Canadian Barbecue Company. Med Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Med Canadian will be with this food truck this Friday at the Millstream Credit Union on Story Avenue in Finley, Ohio from 11 to 3 o'clock. And this Sunday at the Finley Crafted Nano Brewery on Tiffin Avenue in Finley from 11 to 6 p.m. Again, that Sunday from 11 to 6 p.m. Check out the Mad Canadian social media sites, Facebook, Twitter, for more upcoming information and whereabouts of where he and his food truck will head, be heading to next. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a world-class hand-roasted micro-batch coffee company. All of the coffee is fresh roast to order, does not spend time on a shelf sitting in a grocery store where it sat for weeks because they they stick the new ones in the back until the old ones sell in the front. And even before that, it was sitting in a box in the back of the grocery store for Lord knows how long. And even before that, it was probably sitting in a truck in some sort of secondary warehouse before... Why, why are you drinking your coffee like that when you have the Iron Bean Coffee Company that will get your order, then roast the coffee, then ship it directly to your house? What are you thinking? If you're if, if, if you're going, if you're letting your coffee go through all that nonsense before it gets to you, when you have the option of the Iron Bean Coffee Company at ironbeancoffee.com available to you. And oh, by the way, the beans are fair trade certified and USDA organic. So not only is it fresh, it's also moral. So you can buy some morally upstanding marine owned, marine operated coffee at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. It's going on YouTube. It's going on Sloop Cats in our Discord. Hope everyone's having a good day. Yeah. What's up, YouTube? What's up, Discord? Kyle? Another, another football game is upon us. But we talked about the Ohio State game already this, thurs, this Thursday's episode, so we will be getting into the national scope today. Six more games. Yes, sir. So let's not waste any more time then. Let's get into it. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing right here. How are you today, Jared? I took a slightly different tone that time. I don't know why. It felt right. That's it. That's the entire intro. Let's, let's talk some football. Yep. We're right here at week three. Week three, week three picks are much better than week twos, to say the least here. A lot more entertaining games. We don't know if the picks are any better. The games should be better. Games definitely should be better. Uh, we already talked about the Ohio State. We already talked about the Ohio State game on Thursday's episode. So if you want to hear more about that, check out Thursday's episode. But here we're going to be talking about, like what Jared said, the other six games here that we have on slate. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Our first game for our slew picks that we're going to cover is a nooner on ESPN. Cincinnati taking on Indiana. I have to look up what the spread is here. What we have Cincinnati is a three and a half point favorite. Cincinnati's three. Kyle? Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. is currently the highest ranked team in the state of Ohio. How do you like that? Why, 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 why did you have to go there? To point out that rankings don't matter, because we all know what happened okay. the last time Ohio State and Cincinnati met on the field. Every time. Every time they've met on the field. Um, I, you know, I like Cincinnati. I, I, I adore Luke Fickle. I, I really am not wanting to 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 kill them to to rip on them too bad um but let's let's be real honest their first win was against miami of ohio their second win was against murray 
so yeah, they've put up some impressive scores and, and good on them because we've seen teams like Tulsa lose to FCS schools and, and not do what they're supposed to do against inferior opponents. Mm -hmm. But then you look at, but you look at the other side here, Indiana crapped out against Iowa. We thought that was going to be a much better showing for Indiana only scoring six points against a, what we're finding out to be a really good Iowa team early on. And then takes care of business against Idaho. So what kind of team is Indiana? I, I don't think as good as what we were thinking they were going to be at the beginning of the year. So well, I'll take Cincinnati to cover the three and a half here. With only a two game sample size, the question has to become, is Iowa better than we thought? Uh, you know, it, it's it's hard to form these opinions with, with such a small sample size. Iowa, but, Iowa, the only team with top. Yeah, the only team with top 25, two top 25 victories. You know how I feel about rankings, especially early season yeah. rankings. So I'll I know, take I know. that with a grain of salt. Um, so who do you have here, Jared? You know, Cincinnati is a three and a half point favorite. To me, this is a situation and I've been riding this horse this season and it's doing well for me so far. When in doubt, pick the underdog. I have two unknowns right now. So I'm I'm going to I'm going to take the I'm going to take the position. I'm going to take the pick that's giving me the points. It's giving me a little bit of a buffer. I know it's only three and a half points. But I'm going to take this three and a half points. I'm picking Indiana because they're the underdog, because in my mind, this is a pretty 50 50 football game. When in doubt, pick the quarterback. Is, so so does that lead you to Cincinnati? Yes. Yep. Are you picking Cincinnati? Our, our, guest pick, yep, our guest picker is Buckeye Born and Bread. And he has here circled in Bearcats of Cincinnati. There you go. All right. So next up here, also a nooner on ABC. You have the Spartans of Michigan State 2-0 and to start the season. Taking on... Miami, the Miami Hurricanes it is again at noon on ABC where the Hurricanes is a six and a half point favorite. So Michigan State, again, if you're going to point out that Cincinnati had two substand, I mean, so Michigan State's first win is against Northwestern, the good quality Big Ten opponent, but they're they're in straight up rebuild mode. But still a good quality Big Ten opponent. Michigan State wins that game. Then they beat up on the Penguins. You know, it's an FCS team. Miami got boat raced against Alabama, but hey, who doesn't, right? Um, but and almost, worse and almost than, lost to Appy State. Worse than that is almost losing to a Sunbelt team in Appy State. Um, I, I really hate to do it. I really, really hate to do it. I hate to put money, even fictional money, on Michigan State. But Kyle? A lot of points. Six and a half is a lot. When in doubt, pick the underdog. <laughs> give I got the give Spartans me here. Sparty. Ooh, I don't like it. I got the I got the Spartans. Spartans defense. Again, the who they played, though, taking into account who they played. Spartans defense pretty good, maybe, maybe, maybe. So I'll yeah I'll pick I'll pick the Spartans in this game here. Uh, no, my Buckeyes, says MSU to cover but not to win. Entirely yeah. possible. Six and a half yep. points is a big enough number that makes me comfortable. And yeah. Northwestern, Buckeye even born when in, Northwestern's good doesn't have an offense. Yeah, Buckeye born and bred also picked Sparty to cover. All right, our next pick here is a 2.30 kickoff on NBC. So anytime we see NBC, we think Notre Dame. So it is Purdue taking on Notre Dame. Again, 2.30 on NBC. <laughs> Nomad. Uh, what do we have here? We have Notre Dame, a seven and a half point favorite. Am I, oh, I'm sorry. Am I going first? 
That is yeah, my I'll fault. Let you I did not mean to leave that pause out there. That is my fault. Um, I would feel so much better about this. So much better about this if it was six and a half. The number we're picking here, based off of the numbers that were locked in on Monday, is mm-hmm. seven and a half, which gives me pause. I feel like I'd take Notre Dame with no hesitation at six and a half. Seven and a half, that's that's, that's an important distinction. Um, I I think Notre Dame is actually kind of bad. Uh, I think Notre Dame has taken a huge step back from last year. I think Notre Dame is actually kind of bad. Um, but I don't think Purdue is good enough to take advantage of the fact that Notre Dame's kind of bad. Uh, it do, does Purdue keep this closer than a lot of people think that they will? Does Purdue have a potential to make an upset here? Yes. But I just, I, I'm having a hard time seeing it. I, I think Purdue lost most of their difference makers, um, especially in the wide receiving core. And I, I just got to pick Notre Dame, although I, I don't feel great about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of the one of the tough things about Purdue is that they do lose their um their fifth year senior running back um Horvath, I think is how you say it. He's out for potentially up to eight weeks after breaking his leg. So you're without your your main running back there. I think if he was in, I would be I would probably pick Purdue to win this game, or not win this game to to cover. But I, I'll, I'll pick Notre Dame right now. Yeah, it should should be noted. Boilermakers currently two and zero. They win a nine point game over Oregon State, who, outside of Kansas, is maybe the worst traditionally speaking, like the worst team in all of Power Five. Um, and then they beat UConn, which might as well be an FCS school. Um, mm. But yeah, they, they are two and zero. Notre Dame also two and zero, but you know, barely beat a terrible Toledo team last week and they barely beat in overtime, a Florida state team that turned around and lost to an FCS school the next week. I think both of these teams are pretty bad, I guess is what I'm trying to say, but I am going to pick Notre Dame. All right. Next up here. Uh, Did we do our guest picker on that one? Nope. We did not apologize for that. Buckeye born and bred also picked Notre Dame for this game. All right. Next up here, we have. A word from our sponsors, Jared. Oh. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and hear from the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he and his food trucks will be heading to next. Uh, if you missed it at the beginning of the show, or you fast forward it, well, here's your chance to find out where you can get some of that delicious Mad Canadian Barbecue food. Uh, he will be taking his food truck to the No Stream Credit Union this Friday at the Fostoria Avenue in Fostoria Avenue in Finley, Ohio, from eleven to three. And this Sunday at the Finley Crafted Nano Brewery. So get some, get some, get some um, good old local brewery from the Finley Crafted Nano Brewery to go along with some of that uh, Mad Canadian barbecue food. Um, again, that is on Tiffin Avenue in Finley, Ohio, this Sunday from 11 to 6 p.m. Don't miss out. Uh, the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Be sure to follow his social media to find out what, more information. And updates about him and his food truck. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. No Mad, the transit of property exists when I want it to exist. This episode of the Sloopcast is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based, organic, fair trade certified, roast-to-order coffee company. It's like some medium roast. I'm a medium roast guy. Uh, and they have some really nice selection to pick from if you're also a medium roast guy. Uh, for example, there's the Rocco. Now, the Rocco is available in a medium or a dark. So you have your option with that one. Um, it's a unique Ethiopian natural is, is how I'll describe the 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 Rocco. Uh, then there is the, ri- the Rage Against the Dying of the Light. Uh, this has notes of cherry and milk chocolate, orange. Um, medium body, um, really great uh, flavor and aroma. Uh, There is the Thor, which is like kind of a medium dark and the Loki, which kind of a a light medium. So you kind of some tweeners there. Uh, But my two favorite coffees, maybe that the 
for actually maybe like my favorite coffees period, to be honest with you, um, are the ride or die and the cast iron. Uh, the ride or die is a gentle but distinctive version of the classic American breakfast cup. It's made from Brazilian yellow bourbon bean. Um, superb, superb smoothness and flavor out of that. Uh, it's it's really, again, one of my favorite. Then there's the cast iron, which is a medium roast coffee made with 100 percent single origin Honduran Arabica beans. I, I cannot, cannot recommend those two coffees enough those those are two of my absolute favorites but you can find your absolute favorite and if you do you can save money with a subscribe and serve but you can find your absolute favorite over at ironbeancoffee.com that is iron bean coffee america's local coffee roaster all right let's go ahead and finish our gangland uh, that's how math here. works if that's how i want math to work <laughs> while that clock is running i'm in charge all right, next up here, we have 3.30 on CBS. We have Alabama taking on Florida. Again, 3.30 on ESPN. And Alabama is a 15 and a half point favorite. Kyle, when in mm -hmm. doubt, when in doubt, choose the underdog. Yep. I, I'm not in doubt, however. Pick ba I'm picking Bama. Agreed. Uh, agreed with that. 15 and a half is not, not enough. So, you know, man, probably have to, you know, man. probably have to go up to maybe about 20 and a half, 19 and a half, something like that for me to kind of be worried. So yeah, I'll pick Alabama here. Jared picks Alabama and Buckeye born and bred picks Bama too. All right. Next up here, um, is the night game seven thirty on ABC. Over at Penn State, where they're doing the whiteout, Penn State will be hosting Auburn. Now, everybody's up on Auburn right now because, oh, they have the best offense and the best defense in the country and this and that, but... Who they played? I, I don't know. I really don't know. I I mean, do you, do you honestly not know, or are you just you playing in? They played Akron, um, which is another team that... We're, yeah. We'll find out about Akron next week. Yeah. And then, and then they play the Hornets of Alabama State, which is an FCS school. Yes, so uh, I think this is going to be really interesting because we don't really know Auburn. They took care of business, yeah, but this is going to be at Penn State night game, wide out, the South coming up to the North. How's it going to be? Them to do that in at least October in the future. At least, yeah. I don't. This is this is interesting. I I think this is going to be a really close game. I think I think Penn State's going to win this. I think it's going to be a really close game. So I'll I'll take I'll take the um I'll take Auburn to cover, but I think Penn State will win it. I'm picking Penn State up and down, up and down to win to cover the whole shebang. I'm not a conference pride guy. I'm not a cheer for the big 10 during bowl season guys i'm I'm not I, I don't care i would have loved to have seen washington shellac michigan last week I, i'm not a big i'm not a conference pride guy I'm, I'm i'm not that being said but <laughs> but uh i would love nothing more than to see penn state shellac auburn um I, I would absolutely love it. And I think not only do I want to see it, I also think I'm going to see it. Uh, I, I don't think this number is near big enough to scare me off. It is is not. You know, I take that back. It is near enough. That's six and a half. Once again, because we we're talking about this with Notre Dame and Purdue. And I also think we're talking about it with Michigan State and Miami. There's a big difference between six and a half and seven and a half. Had it been seven and a half, I may have been a little more. But no, six and a half, I'm taking it. I'm taking it. Penn State wins by six and a half or more. Absolutely. All right. And Buckeye Born and Bread picks Penn State to cover as well. So, all right. Got some disagreements here. 
All right, and the last one we have here, Jared, Arizona State taking on BYU just because it's Pac-12 after dark. So we got to get one of those games in here. You got you to love having a, a late game in the sloop picks just to keep people interested. 10-15 on ESPN. Arizona oh, State Kyle, is a two sorry, and a half real quick, point. I apologize favorite. for interrupting you again. Uh, the Auburn Penn State game is our Sloopcast social screen for the week. If you're in our Discord server, we will be watching that game live in the Discord server. If you're paying Patreon, you can actually talk to us directly in a shared call as we watch the game. If you're a member of the Discord server, you can listen and chat uh, via text as we do that. Um, but just that's that. You can, at the very least, for free, listen to us talk about this game. Hopefully someone doesn't take over the call with their drunken shenanigans this week. All right, Jared. Arizona State is a two and a half point favorite. Who do you have in this game? Uh, I got BYU. Um, why, Kyle? Why, why do you think I took BYU? If you could venture a guess, Kyle. Why do you think I took BYU? Because the home team generally gets three points. No. When in doubt, take the points. I know it's only two and a half points, which is practically nothing. It really is. It's practic it's less than a field goal. It's practically nothing. But I believe this game to be a 50-50 game. This is a total coin flip game. I feel very confident in saying that I have no idea who's going to win this game. Feel very I, confident I in my ignorance of who's going to win this game. It's a total 50 50. So, what else am I supposed to do besides take the points? So, I'm going to take the points. Who wins? I, I don't BYU, know. But I'm taking BYU to B cover. I got BYU not only to cover, but to win this game. Yeah. And, you know, it's, you know, maybe it's more like a 51 49. Okay. Yeah. And Buckeye Born and Bread also picks BYU. Were you tracking our picks on that, by the way? Uh, let's see. Just, just curious how. It did you, did you, did you, did you pick Notre Dame to cover? I did pick Notre Dame. You did pick Notre Dame. Uh, you picked Sparty. Uh, picked Bama. You picked Penn State. I picked Auburn. So I think I think that's our one difference. And I picked Tulsa to cover it. And you did. You had Ohio State to cover, so we have two difference in this game. Uh, how did Buckeye born game. and bred? Um, let's see here. He has. He he took Cincinnati. I took Cincinnati. I think I think you. Or no, both... I took Indiana. Sorry. Oh, um, you took Indiana. I did oh, take oh. Indiana. So we have three difference then. We have three difference. So that's the only difference that you and Buckeye born and bred has. Yeah, Michigan State, Notre Dame, Alabama. Well, no, because I took Ohio State. Oh, yeah. And he. He you you and he took tall. Well, I'm not sure what he did because he gave us a score prediction. I'm not sure what he picked <laughs> for the Ohio State game, but OK, regardless, that that's our those are our picks. I take Indiana, Michigan State, Notre Dame, Bama, Penn State, BYU, Ohio State. Who do you take just to wrap it up? Cincinnati, Michigan State, Notre Dame, Alabama, Auburn, BYU, and Tulsa to cover. There you go. Kyle, what do we have in Ask Sloopcast? All right, here we go. Buckeye Zach, does Rutgers have a shot at clinching the Big Ten East? No. Mathematically, yes. Realistically, no. Mm. Uh, another question. Could we see an undefeated Iowa taking on Rutgers in the Big Ten title game? No, no, no. Stop it with the Rutgers. Come on, man. I like Shiano and I like I, I like it all, too, buddy. But no, let's 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 pump those brakes. Nomad Nomad asks with a &M and LSU less than stellar. Does anyone compete with Alabama this year? Not in the West, if that's if that's the implied question here. No, not in the West. I think is it Mississippi ranked fairly high right now. 
I don't don't look it up. I don't care. I think I it's care. Mississippi State. Is it Mississippi State. Even I, that, even I, then, I don't care. Um, yeah, no, no, no one in the West is is touching Bama this year. Like, could Florida cover? Like, did I take Bama? Did I take Bama with a lot of certainty to win and cover? Yes, I did. Could Florida cover? Yeah, they could. Are they going to win that football game? No, no, they're not winning that football game. Um. Georgia has a really nice squad this year. That defensive defense, a great defensive line is a great equalizer in a football game. Georgia has a great defensive line. Yes. I Almost think that's right. if we're talking about the SEC in general. Georgia could challenge Bama potentially in, in one game, and that's all they need. All they need is one game. If they played seven games like it was the NBA no, Bama, Bama wins a seven game series. One game. Yeah, Georgia can do that. But out, but outside of that, no, the SEC is very top heavy this year. I don't mm-hmm. like Derek. the like Texas A&M is fine, but not great. Florida is fine, but not great. Bama and Georgia are both very good outside of that. Anyone, Kyle? Like they have two very good teams and two mediocre, you know, high mediocre, fairly good teams. Arkansas. Stop it. Okay. Stop it. All right. Um, another question here. Who does team chaos strike this week? All right. Pick an upset, Kyle. Who do you got? All right. Let's see here. Oh, we got a rivalry battle, which I don't think is going to be all that entertaining. Nebraska and Oklahoma. Do you, do you foresee a upset with that game? That would be fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, no. <laughs> well, you, Cincinnati and Indiana is definitely a game you could look out for. Yeah. I Maybe think Indiana if you're looking surprises for, us. If you're looking, that would be a true team chaos, a top 10 team, an unranked team. Um, if you have to bet on team chaos, if you're betting on team chaos, I'd, I'd take him in Bloomington. Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe Michigan State over ranked Miami. Yeah, I mean, Miami's already lost. Miami's ranked barely. Um, I technically it is. It's an unranked team versus a ranked team. Technically, it's it's a team chaos scenario. But is it mm-hmm. Purdue? I think has well, a legitimate chance against Notre Dame. I think that would count under team mm-hmm. chaos rules. Um, I think I, I think I mentioned this on Monday's episode. I believe. Watch out. Well, I'm not going to be watching this game, but keep an eye on the scoreboard at eight o'clock Tulane and Ole Miss. Yeah, that would also technically qualify. Um, I've been told by a lot of Oregon fans recently uh, that uh, Fresno State's actually really good. You guys, Um, they play UCLA this weekend. UCLA is currently up to 13th in the polls. I don't, I'm not saying I see it. I because I don't, but just saying a lot of Oregon fans have been trying to tell me. Ooh, this is this is this is the fun game. Love to love to watch every year. It's the battle of the brains. Northwestern and Duke. Uh, wasn't it Northwestern and Vanderbilt last time? Or maybe that was two years ago. Last year it was Duke. No, no, there were no out of conference last year. I feel like it was Vanderbilt recently. Anyway. Doesn't matter. Yeah. So um, I, th- I think those are those are possibly some games to keep an eye out. But Indiana, for Indiana, else. Cincinnati, I think is your absolute best case for chaos. Ooh, here, here's a, here's a good one with um the USC coach uh, vacancy right now. If not our rivals lose this week at home, is Franklin a lock to leave? No. If offered the USC job. No. And I'm not saying he won't do it, but you lost me at lock. The second I heard Kyle say lock, I no. I'm not saying he does. I'm not saying he doesn't. I'm I feel very doubtful that he does, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know that he doesn't. Um yeah. feels like Penn State's finally getting their feet underneath him. Uh, if it would feel like a real weird time to leave. 
yeah, I mean, they got they got a good victory first game of the year against Wisconsin. We'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see. All right. I think that's all the questions we have for today, Jared. You got anything maybe else? Maybe you grab that last Nomad one. We have a moment. Okay. Uh, will, or- will Oregon, um, who will Oregon uh, downplay against Pac-12 this year, like against a Pac-12 team? Uh, October 23rd, they play UCLA. Uh, October 2nd, we've already seen Stanford upset one team, maybe a second. Mm-hmm. Uh, they play Oregon. Excuse me. They play, they are Oregon. They play Utah November 20th. Those appear to be their, their biggest hurdles left on the schedule. So if I had to pick one, let's say UCLA. Okay. I'm, you know, there, there's a very close relationship between Chip Kelly and Ryan Day. There will be information shared, I am sure. Although I don't know what Ryan, <laughs> I don't know what the hell Ryan Day is going to be able to say to him, other than you know some lessons learned and don't hire Kerry Combs. Um, but yeah, I, I would, I would bookmark UCLA. That that as as of week two. That appears to be the premier matchup this season in the in the Pac-12. Who would have guessed it? Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, Jared. Right at the third, a little more than thirty mark. So I think we did did good this episode. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and end it on a high note. All right. Um, yeah, highly efficient. That's if the Sloopcast is nothing else. Nothing else, Gangland. We're highly efficient. Something just, and then something falls off of my computer and makes a noise, you know, because I have to if I'm going to scream highly efficient, then I have to immediately do something to disprove myself because comedy rules us all. Um, Let's see. Yeah, that's the end of the episode. I'd like to encourage everyone to go to sloopcast. Excuse me, the sloopcast.com uh, just to find all of our information. Join our discord server. We'll be talking football in there all weekend in a controlled and moderated environment um far away from the shit show of the uh general internet of twitter and so on and so forth so um come and join us uh we we try and keep things uh at least semi sane over there so if you're looking for if you if you miss having interaction on college football for uh, college football over the internet um but you're tired of social media, come join us. We'll we'll be chatting during the games. So um, like I said, join the Discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com. If you don't know Discord, it's a website, it's an app. Uh it's 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 if you've ever used something like Slack or Teams at work, it's it's in that same general vein, that same general idea. So if you ever use something like that, you you kind of get what we're going for with Discord. Come join us, discord.sloopcast.com. You can find the app in the Android store. You can find the app in the Apple store, or you could just go to, uh, it's, I think it's just discord.com or discord.app or something like that on your web browser. So yeah, come come join us. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, mentioned all on Thursdays, but let's make it two in a row for the crew this weekend. Absolutely. That's a good follow up to uh, yesterday's. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, tonight's ending music uh, is uh, the Cordial Sins, another Columbus based band. Uh, so I want you to go ahead and check them out uh, for our YouTube audience. You guys don't get to hear the music because YouTube. But uh, you can you can check out the links below if you want to uh, be in on the music uh, that we play on the show. Just. Go down there. It's normally a YouTube link straight to the song. Click on it and you get the proper ending everyone else gets. And uh, I'll just follow the band. Follow them on Bandcamp. Follow them on YouTube. Follow the band wherever you can follow the band. Give give them a listen and and give them a shot. And, you know, we have to support our local creatives uh, if, if we want Columbus to be or Ohio to be a, a place for creatives. Then we have to support the ones who are here and trying and doing so. Uh, 
that, that's my soapbox. I'm going to hop back off of it and tell you to enjoy this song uh, by The Cordial Sins. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is The Cordial Sins. <laughs> 